Making watercolor gift tags with 3D lettering is a fun way to personalize gifts. I'll show you how to paint a bunch of letters quickly with my easy four-step process. I also made a free template for you so you don't have to draw. I'll teach you how to paint these 3D letters in three different color schemes. So you're getting a bonus color theory lesson too. When you don't have enough time to make handmade gifts for everyone, these personalized watercolor gift tags are the next best thing. I'm going to show you how to paint beveled letters with a 3D shading effect. I already did the hard part for you. I spent hours drawing all the beveled letters so you can jump straight into the painting. You can download the free template at the link in the video description. All you have to do is trace the letters onto your watercolor paper. I designed the letters to fit on a 2.5 by 3.5 inch tag, which is about the size of a standard playing card. I recommend positioning the letter toward the bottom of the tag so you have room to punch a hole at the top. I'll show you how to cut them into a tag shape at the end. If you want to paint a bunch of gift tags at once, draw a grid of 2.5 inch by 3.5 inch rectangles on your paper. Then trace a letter in the bottom portion of each rectangle. Use a kneaded eraser to lighten your pencil lines before you start painting. If you lose sight of your pencil lines while you're painting, refer to the template as a guide for where to paint the shapes. When I'm painting 3D letters, I like to plan out my colors and shading with a simple square divided into four triangles. It's like an overhead view of a pyramid. I'm going to show you three different types of color schemes, monochromatic, analogous, and complementary. Let's start with monochromatic. You can use a single color of paint and build up the values to create a 3D effect. The final shape will have four values, a light, medium light, medium dark, and a dark value of the same color. We'll use a glazing technique to create these values. The easiest way to paint these is to work from big shapes to small shapes. With each layer of transparent watercolor, you build up the values from light to dark. First, fill in the entire shape with the light value. Now, imagine a light source coming from the top left of the page, so the lightest parts of the shape will be on the top and left sides. The bottom right will be in shadow. Once the first layer is dry, add a little more pigment to your paint and fill in the shape again except for the top triangle. Once that layer is dry, Add a little more pigment to your paint and fill in the bottom and right triangles only. Finally, when that's dry, add more pigment to your paint and add another layer on the bottom triangle only. This little pyramid will be your guide to shading your letters. Let me show you how to do the same type of shading on a letter shape. Start by filling in the entire letter with your lightest value. This should be a watery mix of your color. Use a brush that has a nice point. I'm using a number four Princeton Heritage brush that comes to a fine point. Once the first layer is dry, add some more pigment to your paint puddle to create a medium light value. Paint the letter again except for the top bevels. So on the F, I'm not going to paint the trapezoid shape at the top of the letter, I'm also painting around the top of the cross stroke. Let that layer dry. Once it's dry, add more pigment to your paint to make a medium dark value. Paint it on the right side and bottom bevels of the letter. When that layer is dry, mix up your dark value and paint it only on the bottom bevels. On the F, that's the triangle at the bottom and the bottom side of the cross stroke. Mm -hmm. 
If you want to create a more colorful letter, you can use the same process with an analogous color scheme. Choose three colors next to each other on the color wheel, like yellow, orange, and pink. Use the lightest color, in this case yellow, for the light and medium light values. Orange will be the medium dark value, and pink will be the darkest value. Let me show you how to paint a U with an analogous color scheme. First, fill in the entire letter with the lightest yellow value. Once that's dry, add more yellow pigment to your paint to create the medium light value. Paint that everywhere except the top bevels. On the U, you would paint around the top two triangles and the top of the bottom curve. I actually messed that up on this one. I painted over the top bevel on the curve with the medium light value. So even with the pyramid guides, I know figuring out the shading for all the different letters is tricky. So to help you and myself, I've included a value map with the free template. The value map shows you how to shade each letter. You can follow it as a guide while you're painting. After that layer is dry, mix up a medium dark value of orange. Paint that on the right side and bottom bevels of the letter. Layering watercolors like this is called glazing. With each layer, you are glazing a new color over the previous color. Because watercolor is transparent, the colors below will glow through the color on the top and harmonize your colors. When the orange is dry, mix up a darker value of pink. Paint the pink on the bottom bevel only. Now I want to show you the trickiest color scheme, which is using two complementary colors. Complementary colors are opposite each other on the color wheel, like red and green, blue and orange, or yellow and purple. They are a striking combo when used together, but if you've ever mixed two complementary colors, you know that you get a brown or gray. That's because the two colors neutralize each other. So we don't want to glaze complementary colors and end up with yucky brown or gray letters. Instead, we're going to split the letter in half. We'll use one color for the light and medium light values on the top left. We'll use the complementary color for the bottom right section. Here's what that would look like on the letter N. First, paint a light value of orange on only the left and top bevels. On the N, I will paint the left side of each vertical section and also the left underside of the diagonal section, plus the bevels on the top. For tricky letters like this, refer to the value map. When that is dry, add more pigment to your paint to create a medium light orange. Paint that value on the left facing bevels only. When the orange is completely dry, mix up a medium dark value of blue. Don't go too dark, you only need it to be a shade or two darker than your medium orange. Paint the blue on the right and bottom sections of the letter, including the right top side of the diagonal stroke. Once that's dry, add more pigment to darken your blue. Paint the darker blue on the bottom facing bevel. Aren't these 3D letters fun? In a moment, I want to share with you a few fun ways you can embellish your gift tags. 
But first, let me show you how to paint a bevel letter with a colored background. You can do this with any color scheme you like. I'm going to do another monochromatic example with pink. This technique is cool because the background color allows you to leave the top bevels of your letters white. That creates more contrast in your letter and makes them pop even more. First, prop up your board or sketchbook so it's at a slight angle. I use my tape roll. Doing this will help you create a smooth background wash by using gravity to pull the color down the page. First, paint your lightest value over the entire background and the letter except the top bevels. Leave the top bevel shapes white. Paint in long horizontal strokes. Reload your brush for each new row. You want a bead of wet paint to collect at the bottom edge. Keeping this wet bead is how you ensure a smooth flat wash. As you move down the tag, paint around the areas that you need to leave white. At the bottom, dry off your brush and use it to suck up the excess water and paint. When the background layer is dry, paint the medium light value over the letter only, covering everything except for the sections that you left white. When that layer is dry, paint the medium dark value on the right facing and bottom bevels. Once that's dry, paint the darkest value on the bottom bevels only. Once you get the hang of it, you can work on several letters at a time. So while one is drying, you can work on another letter. I think it's easiest to paint a batch of these if you stick with the monochromatic color scheme or the monochromatic style with a colored background. When you're working with lots of colors, you may need to change your water more often. You also might need to grab an extra palette for more mixing areas. Now I want to show you three fun ways to embellish your letters and gift tags. First, let me show you how to do a drop shadow. This will enhance the 3D effect. Start by redrawing the letter offset to the bottom right. You can freehand this for simple letters. For more complex letters or the star shape, you can use a light box to retrace the letter. Start by lining up your painted letter over the template. Then, shift your watercolor paper up and to the left. Trace the parts of the letter that you can see to the bottom right. Use a kneaded eraser to lighten your pencil lines before painting the shadow. Paint the drop shadow with a light mix of blue, purple, or gray. I love to use French Ultramarine or Indian Throne Blue for my drop shadows.
The drop shadow looks great on the letters that have a white background, but you can also add drop shadows on colored backgrounds. You can glaze the drop shadow right over the background color. Drop shadows in watercolor are so cool because the paint is transparent, so they truly look like a shadow. The next embellishment idea is to add an inline to your letter. An inline is the line that runs down the center of the letter. I recommend using white or metallic ink to make the inline stand out. I'm using gold mica ink and a ruling pen to paint the inline in the center of the letter. This is a great way to tidy up any letters that got a little sloppy or the line where two colors meet on a complementary color scheme. Another way you can embellish your tags is with a background pattern. I'm using my gold ink and a ruling pen and a cork-backed ruler to make diagonal lines on the background of this letter J. You can also use your ruling pen to make random dots all over the background. I think the metallic ink is such a fun touch for gift tags. It's time to turn these letters into gift tags. Use a paper trimmer or scissors to cut your tags apart. To create the tag shape, snip off one of the top corners, flip it over and line it up on the other side and cut off a matching corner. Punch a hole in the top of the tag. Add a loop of baker's twine or ribbon to finish off your gift tag. How cute are these gift tags, and what a joy to paint. I hope you have fun painting a batch of these for your gifts this year. And speaking of gifts, if you're still looking for some ideas, check out my video, 10 Gift Ideas for Watercolor Artists. Your gift might inspire one of your loved ones to take up watercolor.